To your family members of faith around the world who hope for heaven, nice to meet you. I am Instructor j e o n g Jae-sung of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the presider for today. Allow me to greet you once again. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the pastors and saints who attended today's precious Revelation Seminar. As you have opened your heart widely and listened well so far, I hope that this time will be a time you can put the word testified today in your hearts and be reborn as precious believers acknowledged by God. First, let us give our prayers to our Father God. Holy and truthful Father God, we sincerely thank you for fulfilling all the promises of the Bible, testifying to us that you are alive and working. We give you sincere gratitude for allowing us to perceive. Today, we also want to start a seminar that testifies to the contents of the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, which is a new covenant that you and Jesus promised and fulfilled. So, Father God, please receive glory and give the infinite grace and enlightenment to all pastors and saints who have attended this event. Father God, we sincerely pray that you will be with us at this time and also be with the instructor who will testify your words. We sincerely hope that you will fill us abundantly with grace and love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who saved us from our sins. Amen. Yes, continuing from the last time in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, today we will take a time to learn the words of Revelation chapter 6. Now we will introduce the instructor. Today's Revelation chapter 6 will be taught by Lee Jae-sang, who is appointed as the Thomas tribe leader of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We will welcome the tribe leader, Lee Jae-sang, with a round of applause. Hello, greetings. It is nice to meet you, the pastors and saints who love God and Jesus from all over the world. I am Lee j e s h a n g the leader of Thomas tribe, chosen in the name of Thomas, one of the disciples of Jesus. Once again, greetings. The reason why I am able to stand here is because I had attended a Revelation seminar proclaimed by the chairman of Shincheonji, the promised pastor, and he had explained Revelation completely from chapters 1 through 22. That seminar had lasted for five days, and he had explained everything from chapter 1 verse 1 to the last verse of chapter 22 without being stuck at any point. I heard everything, and I was so surprised by it. Up until that point, no one had been able to explain Revelation, and if people were stuck in the middle, they would simply say that we could not go too in-depth with it. And so, I had never experienced anyone explaining this Revelation in its entirety. However, through the five-day seminar, He had explained all of the contents without leaving behind a single verse. And when I heard those contents, I was so filled with grace and with joy. He had said that the world of darkness would end, and a wonderful world in which God would reign would arrive. Then, has God not reigned up until this point? In a world reigned by God, it says there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. However, in this world, all this crying, mourning, wars, and pain is because it is not the true God who has been reigning over this world, but it is Satan the devil who has deceived all the nations. But at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, the true work of God will finally take place. And when I heard that such good things would happen, I was so deeply moved by it. And so I examined and verified this. The more I verified, the more I realized that this word was correct and accurate. 
and therefore I am standing here at this time to share with everyone this word that I had learned through the chairman, the promised pastor. Today, I am going to speak about the contents of Revelation chapter 6. What I will testify today will be the testimony about the prophecy and the fulfillment of God's new covenant, Revelation. And today, we will go into the contents of chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6 has verses 1 through 17, and if we were to give a title to this chapter, it will be the judgment of the chosen sun, moon, and stars of the first heaven that betrayed. We must understand and remember this title well. If we do, we will quickly be able to understand the events of this entire chapter. If we were to talk about a key summary of chapter 6, it is, when does a judgment take place? This judgment takes place after Jesus obtains a scroll sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God, and as Jesus opens the seals, the judgment takes place. Who judges? It is Jesus who came in the spiritual body, and He will judge through the four living creatures that we saw in chapter 4. These were the archangels of the heavenly army. Then who are those receiving the judgment, and where are they? Isn't this very important? If people don't know about those who will receive judgment, then there are vague instances in which people misunderstand as being an entire plague of the world or some judgment of the world. However, this is not the case. And that is why the testimony of one who has seen and heard is very important. And we must understand that the judgment is for the pastors and saints of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands who betrayed in Revelation chapters 2, 3, and 13. Now, if we were to see why they received judgment, just as you had received the explanation already, Jesus sent the letters through John in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. But the messengers of the seven churches did not repent even after receiving the letters, and so they received judgment through the wrath of God and the Lamb. Now, when this happens, the contents that are recorded will appear as an actual fulfillment and event. And all of this took place in one location on this earth, the Tabernacle Temple founded in Kwacheon, South Korea in 1966. This church did not follow the traditional ways, but it appears when revelation fulfills on this earth. Jesus, in the spiritual body, chooses seven people on this earth and begins the work of the golden lampstands to brighten up the darkness. At this time, the messengers of the seven churches go on the path of corruption, and so Jesus leaves them, and they fall from the right hand of Jesus. So through these events, there are the destroyers, the Nicolaitans, who enter and do their work of disruption. Now, these are not good events, and so Jesus chooses one person. He chooses a pastor and reveals all of these things and shows it to him. He even reveals the secrets, the mysteries, and instructs him to send the letters of repentance. But even after they received these letters, they did not repent, and therefore they were ultimately judged is what we have to understand. Now, we will read verses 1 and 2 and explain. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Yes, you read well. If you look here at verse 1, it says, I watched. The entire book of Revelation was recorded by Apostle John who saw all the contents in vision. And what was recorded has been passed on until today. 
When the events fulfill, we must first know that the figure who sees and hears the events of the entire book at the time of fulfillment is the new John. This new John is the one who sees and hears all of this word of testimony in the fulfillment time. In other words, we must understand that through the pastor who was promised by Jesus, the actual entities and the fulfillment will be testified to the world. We will now examine one by one the events when the first seal is opened. First, let's understand the meaning of being sealed with seven seals. Of course, you have all heard this explanation in chapter 5, but to explain once again, the scroll that is sealed with seven seals is the book of Revelation that has been hidden in parables until the time of Revelation's fulfillment. This book of Revelation was sealed with seven seals, and this scroll was written by God Himself, and He sealed it with seven seals Himself. Therefore, there is no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth who can open it or read or understand. Therefore, 2,000 years, this faith life has passed by, but there was no one who was able to properly testify about the contents of this revelation. Because God had recorded it Himself, He had sealed it with seven seals Himself, so no one could know. However, the reason why we are now able to understand is because Jesus had opened the seals one by one. Why did He open it? Because He overcame. That is why He's able to open it one by one. And so, the one who opens it is Jesus. Then what does it mean that the seals are opened? Jesus opened and revealed the words of this book of Revelation which God had hidden in parables. Apostle John saw it in vision and he recorded it. But at the time of the fulfillment, the promised pastor, the new John, is the one who sees the actual events and testifies about it. Every time a seal is opened, the actual entities of what was written appears. These seven seals of this book are all opened by Revelation chapter 8, and that is why it is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ because all of the seals are opened by Jesus. And we must understand that there is only one who has seen and heard all of these things, and that is the new John, the promised pastor at the time of the fulfillment. There are four living creatures that appear when the seal is opened, and these are the four living creatures, the four archangels from Revelation chapter 4. These four archangels are the commanders of the heavenly army that move that army. In Zechariah chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, it said that the first chariot had red horses, the second chariot black horses, the third white horses, and the fourth had dappled horses. The reason why we read Zechariah alongside this content is that in Revelation chapter 6, every time a seal is opened, similar events take place. The white horse appears, the red, black, and pale horse appear. And so we have to understand that these are horses, not just one horse. And so please understand the four chariots, the four winds, the four living creatures, and the four archangels are the heavenly hosts. And there is the archangel that moves the heavenly host. Whose command do the archangels work by? Through the command of Jesus. The different colors of these horses show that they have different duties that were appointed. Now let's take a look at the meaning of the white horse, its rider, and the bow that appears when the first seal is opened. When the first seal is opened, it means that Jesus has opened this seal. One of the four living creatures says, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and it says that he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Now here, when John recorded it in vision, it's because he had actually seen in vision the white horse, its rider, and the bow. Then when these words are fulfilled, 
The writer is Jesus who is in his spiritual form. When we read Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 or chapter 19 verse 16, we see that Jesus rode on a white horse and he wore the blood-stained robe and he had written on his thigh the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This King of Kings and Lord of Lords is Jesus who is the Lamb. So, what about this horse? We have to understand that this horse is the flesh. When the work of judgment takes place, the Spirit uses the flesh to carry it out. And this is the work of judging the tabernacle of the chosen people who betrayed. What about this bow? This bow is the word of judgment. Since this bow is the word of judgment, we will take a look at the meaning of the bow, the instrument that is used to judge. It is written in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, that God rode on a horse and shot arrows. Then this content here is in regards to God carrying out judgment by using the spirits of the heavenly army and with his word, it is to judge those who did not accept his word and instead were rebellious. Even in places like Lamentations chapter 2, verses 3 to 6, there are references to bows. Like an enemy, he has strung his bow, and he has poured out his wrath like fire on the tent of the daughter of Zion. When this bow appears in vision, it may look like a bow, but in reality, when the events take place, it is the word, the word of judgment. In John chapter 12, verse 48, this was also spoken by Jesus as well. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. The letters received by the messengers of the seven churches in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 were not simply letters from John. They were Jesus' letters. John had delivered those words of Jesus. In reality, it was the new John who delivered it. And so rejecting those letters was the same as rejecting the words of Jesus. And so in the end, they were judged by those words. And so we can understand that the bow is the word of judgment. Now, where does he shoot with this bow? As mentioned earlier, he is shooting the tabernacle of the chosen people who had betrayed. In Lamentations chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we saw this earlier, God's wrath comes down upon the tent of the daughter of Zion. Why? Because they betrayed. The reason he shoots them with the bow is that the pastors and the saints of the tabernacle temple had betrayed Jesus, and they had become one together with Satan's people, and that is why they are shot with the bow. Earlier in Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, we see that the pastors and the saints of the seven churches were urged to repent because they had become one with the Nicolaitans, eating the food sacrificed to idols and committing sexual immorality. Repent because this is wrong, is what was said. But because they did not accept, they are judged as a result. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6, as a reference, it is written, You, Lord, have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. Wouldn't it be possible for them to be abandoned because they were once chosen? Without being chosen, there cannot be an abandonment. And so the reason the Lord had abandoned the family of Jacob was because they had made a covenant with the Gentiles, and that is why they were abandoned and they were rejected. The meaning of a conqueror bent on conquest can be understood that just as Jesus had overcome at the time of the first coming, he also overcomes Satan the devil at the time of the second coming at Revelation's fulfillment. For this, you can refer to what is written in John chapter 16, verse 33. Now let's read about the opening of the second seal. 
When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. Now let's take a look at the events when the second seal is opened. The one who opens the second seal is Jesus the Lamb. And so there is a red horse, its rider, and a large sword that appears. This red horse, the rider, and the large sword appear to take away the peace from the earth. These things were recorded because in vision, the red horse and the rider and the large sword were actually seen. However, I hope you understand that when these events take place in reality, that the riders appear as spirits. And these spirits use the flesh on this earth to carry out those works. These spirits are many spirits just like the ones in the heavenly army, and these spirits use the flesh to work. The large sword here is the word of judgment. So this large sword is not actually a large sword. It is simply a large sword in the vision. This large sword are swords that we see used as weapons in wars and in fights. But the meaning of this large sword, when it actually fulfills, is used as an instrument of judgment. The people were asked to repent, but they did not repent. And regarding this, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 16, Jesus said, I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Then the sword of the mouth represents the word of judgment that comes out of the mouth. It is written in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, that the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Our fight is not a fight against flesh and blood, but a fight against the rulers of darkness and against the evil spirits. And so in order to effectively confront the devil's schemes, we must wear the armor of God, which is the word, and we must have the word of the Holy Spirit and that sword. In the Bible, particularly here in Revelation chapter 6, these horses and weapons that appear every time a seal is opened are not the weapons that are used to kill people fighting in the wars of the physical world, but they are used as the instruments of judgment. Regarding the reality of the earth where the peace is taken away, this does not mean that the peace of the entire earth is taken away. People have misunderstood this and wondered whether certain world wars were events that were taking place when the seals were opened. However, we can understand that what was written actually applies to the reality of this earth, the tabernacle temple that had begun with the Spirit and returned to the flesh, these chosen people who had betrayed. Jesus had said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. But if you also look at the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, it is written, Blessed are the peacemakers. And so earlier he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. But in chapter 10, he said that he did not come to bring peace. So what does all of this mean? This peace is the peace that we must have with God. But right now, in this tabernacle of the chosen people who betrayed, they are carrying out evil works after joining hands with the Nicolaitans, the evil ones. And so I have come to bring a sword. This is in regards to judgment. 2,000 years ago, the work of the lampstand carried out by John the Baptist had temporarily shown the light but became darkened. And so, they were supposed to give light, but they entered into the darkness and became one with it. Jesus then came as a light, said that this was not correct, and that he did not come to bring peace, but came to bring a sword, which was the judgment. 
the meaning of taking away the peace and causing people to kill one another, is that the congregation members of the tabernacle that betrayed fell into temptation and hate each other, giving each other up to the Nicolaitans, the destroyers, causing them to kill spiritually, not anyone in the flesh. Every time a seal is opened in this book of Revelation, the judgment is taking place with the horse, the rider, and its weapon. It is not the killing of a large human population, but it is a spiritual judgment of these chosen people of the tabernacle that had betrayed, and I hope we can understand this. That is why in Matthew chapter 24 verse 10, this Matthew chapter 24 has the events that also take place at the Lord's second coming. It said many people will fall into testing and they will hate one another. Also in Matthew chapter 10 verse 21, it says that brothers will give brothers over to death, fathers will give their children over to death, and children their parents. These kind of horrendous events we must understand are taking place spiritually for the chosen people who betray. And so the place in which these events happen when the seals are opened is this tabernacle temple. Because these were the events that were seen and heard, that is why it is being testified. Now let's take a look when the third seal is opened. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the third seal is opened, we have the black horse, the rider, and the pair of scales in his hand. Likewise here, the scene of this rider and a black horse with a pair of scales was seen in vision, and that is why it was written down as such. But when the actual events take place, this rider refers to a spirit, the horse refers to the flesh, the people on earth, and it means that the Spirit works through people. This scale is not a literal scale, but the Word of God that weighs the faith and the deeds. Let's take a moment to understand the meaning of this scale as a tool of judgment. When judging this world, it's not like we are fighting a war, a battle with some actual scales, right? And so we can certainly understand that this is a spiritual event through this tool of judgment. When you take a look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 12, there's an expression that says, God who weighs the heart. How can you weigh a heart on a pair of scales? How can you determine whether someone's heart is worthy in the eyes of God or not? Isn't it possible to know by seeing whether the person keeps and obeys the word and puts it into practice or disobeys it? And so this scale that weighs a heart, this scale refers to the word of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, it says that God weighs the actions. But what is acceptable to God or not? depends on whether they are acting according to this word or not. And so they are weighed through the word of God. Also in Daniel chapter 5, if we would take a look at the reference, it is about King Belshazzar. A finger had come and written mene mene tekel parsim, and no one had understood what those words had meant. However, only Daniel, whom God had chosen at the time, was able to reveal the meaning, and this word tekel meant that the king was weighed on the scales and was found lacking. But this doesn't mean that the king needed to weigh a certain amount to act out the role as a king, right? And so the fact that this king was found lacking on the scales means that he was shown lacking in front of God's words. And so we must understand that the scale is the word of God that weighs the faith and the deeds. Now it says here, a quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages. 
This means that there is a seed of faith that is remaining through the unchanging words of Jesus during this time of judgment. Let's go a little bit further. When it comes to a scale, there has to be a weight, a pendulum, which is a standard. And so these people who are worthy of a day's wages, this quart of wheat and three quarts of barley, are the people who are qualified. Likewise, the letter to repent was sent to the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed. But in Revelation chapter 3 verses 4 through 5, there are those who were worthy who did not soil their clothes. And so it says that just like that, there will be the one who overcomes dressed in white. These are the examples in the faith that were taken in Revelation chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. But there were people who were urged to repent, and there was no repentance, and so that is why the judgment is taking place. People were weighed to see if there was anyone worthy of these words. But there was none else except those who were dressed in white and did not soil their clothes, just like the quart of wheat and three quarts of barley. And so this work of keeping a little, having a little remaining, in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, it says, If the Lord had not left us a few survivors, we would have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. At the time of Noah and Lot, there was also a judgment. Isn't there also a judgment at the time of Revelation? At the time of Noah, only Noah's family had entered into the ark and were worthy. And only those who kept the word and fled from the city were able to survive the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. Likewise, it is said that when Jesus returns, the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah and of Lot. And so during that time of judgment, we see that there will be a small remaining amount as well. This small remaining seed is what remains and will go on to do greater works. We'll continue with this content later on. And going back here, it says, Do not damage the oil and the wine. When we look at Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 4, there are two witnesses, and they are introduced as two olive trees. There are also the two lampstands. What comes out of the olive tree is olive oil, and the word that the witnesses testify about of what they have seen and heard, that is the olive oil, and so it says, do not damage it. When it says, do not damage the wine, grapes come from the vine, and the wine is produced from its fruit, the grapes. And so in this logic, Jesus said that He was a true vine, and so the words of Jesus becomes the wine. To explain a little bit further, when we think about Revelation chapter 1 verse 2, it says that John testified the word of God and the testimony of Jesus that is everything that he had seen. This testimony of Jesus is the word of Jesus. Everything he saw were the actual events that were seen and heard, correct? And so this wine and this oil telling us not to damage this means not to harm those who have the words of testimony and the words of Jesus. Now, let's read the events that take place with the fourth seal. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Here, the contents about the pale horse and the rider appear, and the rider's name is Death, and they kill by the beasts of the earth. Let's take a look at this one by one. The pale horse and the rider have appeared, and as mentioned earlier, these riders are the spirits. Now the fact that the rider's name is Death 
means that it has the appointed task to kill, a duty to kill. Therefore, these riders are spirits, and these horses are the flesh that are on earth. The spirits are using the flesh to work. And what does it mean to be killed by the beasts of the earth? Regarding the beasts of the earth, if we go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, in this tabernacle of heaven, there is the beast that comes in from the sea, but there is also a beast that comes up from the earth. This entity is used. This entity is used to judge. And this beast of the earth is a destroyer. So where does this destroyer destroy? Jesus had chosen the seven and did the work of the golden lampstands to light up within the darkness. But this destroyer had trampled on this place and destroyed it. The actual entity of the beasts of the earth is a destroyer that belongs to Hades. This entity is the one that tramples on the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands and gives the mark that is 666. These contents will be explained in further details in Revelation chapter 13 and will also be related to Revelation chapter 17. And so we'll explain briefly here. In the Bible, if you take a look at Isaiah chapter 10 verse 5, there are the Assyrians. They are the Gentiles, not the chosen people. But God calls these Assyrians and uses them as a rod of wrath to punish the rebellious chosen people who did not listen to Him. And so you can also apply this content when it says that the people are killed by the beasts of the earth. The reason why the rider's name is death is because it had received the appointed task to kill. In Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 4 to 6, God commands this. There is a place called Jerusalem, and this Jerusalem we can also call as God's chosen people, right? But unfortunately, there are abominable things, detestable events that are happening in Jerusalem. They are worshipping other gods, eating food sacrificed to idols, breaking God's laws and regulations. They are doing such detestable actions that God hates. During that time, those who lament over those actions, these are the worthy people, correct? But those who look at those actions and they do not cry, they do not lament, and they just accept it as natural things, it means that they are already dead. That is why those who weep and lament over those actions receive a mark on their forehead. Those who do not receive that mark are not worthy, and the angel is used to, in order to judge and kill them. Just because it says death, it is not something that belongs to Satan, but we must understand that it is the appointed task to kill. The reason why Hades follows behind is to take away those who were slain. Now we see that there is the event of killing with the authority over a quarter of the earth. But this one quarter of the earth is not talking about one quarter of this entire planet earth. We have to understand that it is the authority to kill a quarter of the saints of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed. As this judgment takes place in Revelation chapter 6, this judgment does not begin and end all at once, but one-fourth is being killed here spiritually. Now there are the remaining people, right? They are killed one-third, one-third, and one-third as we see in Revelation chapters 8 and 9. They are gradually judged and killed spiritually. And so because we will continue, here at this time, it is the judgment over this one-fourth. How about killing with the sword, famine, death, and the beasts of the earth? 
The sword is the word of judgment, and the famine refers to a spiritual famine without the word. It is not talking about not having physical food and there being a physical famine. Because the place where the chosen people are, are full of evil actions. God does not send rain there, and they no longer have the word, right? And so this death is a death that kills a spirit, not of the flesh. It is a spiritual judgment that kills a spirit, and the beast of the earth is a destroyer belonging to Hades. Just as the Assyrians were used as a stick to punish the rebellious chosen people, we must understand that the beasts of the earth are the destroyers belonging to Hades. Now let's take a look at when the fifth seal is opened. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. Yes, when the fifth seal is opened, the martyrs appear and cry out for the vengeance of their blood. These martyrs under the altar crying out. This altar here refers to under the altar in front of God's throne in Revelation chapter 4. It is the same place where the four living creatures are. The reason they ask to judge the inhabitants of the earth is that the inhabitants of the earth are now the destroyers, the pastors of Satan. And because they are the destroyers, judging them means that Satan is also being judged. That is why they ask for the inhabitants of the earth to be judged. Then when is the vengeance of the blood of the martyrs fulfilled? There is a time when Babylon, which is a dwelling place for demons, is judged. Their vengeance for their grudge is given through the judgment of this destroyer, the enemy, the devil. And so there has to be certain events up until then. That is why he tells them to wait. If we take a brief look here, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 20, it says that God has judged her for the way she treated you. And so the vengeance of the blood is repaid after the events of Revelation chapter 16, 17, and 18 then that vengeance can be fulfilled. The reason why the white robes are given is that the actions of the martyrs are acknowledged as being righteous. They were beheaded for the work of God and for the testimony of Jesus. And so they were given the white robes, meaning that their actions were acknowledged as righteous. The entities of the fellow servants and the brothers. Here it says that the numbers of the fellow servants and brothers have to be filled. These fellow servants are the fellow pastors and saints of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betray. Why are they called as fellow servants? Because the martyrs were also chosen by God, and they were chosen by Jesus, and they were obedient till death. However, at the end of times, at Revelation's fulfillment, the pastors and saints of the chosen tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands had broken the promise that was given. And so ultimately, they are punished through the wrath of God. They were also chosen people. But they are not the chosen people who kept the promise. They are the chosen people who betrayed. So in the perspective of just the chosen people, they were once the fellow servants, is why it's expressed in this way. But the time when the number of those fellow servants and brothers are filled is a time when the pastors and the saints of that tabernacle are killed one-third, one-third, one-third at a time. So when the fourth seal was opened, one-fourth of the earth was killed by sword, famine, and plague, and the beasts of the earth. 
So there are the remaining people, right? This will continue in chapters 8, 9, and 12, and that is how they are judged. Now, we will take a look at the contents of the sixth seal being opened. The most important content is when the sixth seal is opened. So let us focus well and listen to this content so that we can understand. Let's read the main reference. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? The most important content in Revelation 6 is when the sixth seal is opened. This event that occurs when the sixth seal is opened is the most important event in Revelation chapter 6. This great earthquake refers to the great shaking of the hearts of the saints of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands. This heart is also called as the earth, Every time a seal is opened, judgment is passed down continuously within this tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands. And this great earthquake, once again, is referring to when their hearts are being shaken. It is said that the sun, moon, and stars darken and fall. But if the real sun gets darkened, if the moon does not shine and these stars fall, then there cannot be anything else that happens after, right? In vision, it was seen that the sun was darkened, the moon was not giving light, and the stars were falling. That is why it was recorded in this way. But when these events actually fulfill, we must understand a true entity of the sun, moon, and stars to understand this. The reality of these sun, moon, and stars are the pastors, the evangelists, and the saints of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 9 through 11, it says that Jacob's family was referred to as a sun, moon, and stars. And the reason for this is when Joseph had a dream, he told Jacob that the sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed down to me. His father Jacob then said, Will I, your mother, and your brothers actually come and bow down to you? And soon afterwards, this did actually happen in reality. So if this family of Jacob is a tabernacle called as heaven, Jacob becomes the sun, his wife the moon, and his son the stars. In this same manner, when the events of Revelation fulfill, the tabernacle of the chosen people is called heaven, and the pastor, the evangelist, and the saints there become the sun, moon, and stars. There is an event where these people become darkened and fall, because as they receive judgment by the wrath of God and the Lamb, but it is not about the actual sun in the sky becoming darkened, the moon no longer giving off light, or the stars falling, but about the pastors and saints of the tabernacle of the chosen people who were known as the sun, moon, and stars. They belong to God, but because they receive judgment, they are thrown down to the earth and they become the possession of the earth of the Gentiles. The event when all the appointed workers had to resign refers to the event when they are darkening and falling after they were judged. As a result of this, what event happens? What used to belong to God is now being transferred over and belongs to the Gentiles. These sun, moon, and stars will also appear in Revelation chapters 12 and 13, and so we must understand that these refer to the pastors, evangelists, and saints of this tabernacle of heaven.
In Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, it says that they began with the Spirit, but they returned to the flesh. And in Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, it says that the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown out into the darkness. The reality of these subjects of the kingdom who were thrown into the darkness are the pastors and the saints of the tabernacle of the golden lampstands that had betrayed. After these events take place, it says many will come from the east and west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. It means that many people will be harvested. We can find this event in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 and 31. Because the events of Matthew chapter 24 are the events of the second coming of the Lord. When the prophecies of Revelation are being fulfilled, it is said that it is an event of the time of the second coming. And after the tribulation, the sun is darkened, the moon does not give its light, the stars are falling, and the heavenly bodies are shaken. Then who receives this tribulation? The chosen people who betray. When the sun, moon, and stars darken and fall, it becomes a spiritual night. It is said that Jesus comes like a thief in the night. He comes with the angels and gathers the elect from one end of the heavens to the other. This is the work of harvesting. When the events of Revelation 6 are finished, in Revelation chapter 7, there is the harvesting and sealing that takes place to gather the people. This is the creation of the new kingdom and new people. This is the exact same that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. There is a new heaven and new earth that is created. The first heaven and the first earth passes away. The passing away for the first heaven and first earth is not some catastrophe where the earth is destroyed, but it is about the tabernacle of the chosen people who had committed sin. And all of those people who had entered the darkness and come to an end. Therefore, we must understand that this heaven passing away represents the fall and the end of the tabernacle of the chosen people because the Spirit leaves them. If we also take a look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, God was together with the people but the reason He had left them is because they were filled with sin and God could not be together with sin. That is why God left and all those people became just simply the flesh. Every mountain and island that was removed from their place represents the branch churches of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that were also moved out from God's side because they are being judged and they belong to the Gentiles, the destroyers. The mountains and islands being removed did not happen as an actual physical event, but it was simply recorded in this way. What actually happened in the fulfillment were that the branch churches of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands were also judged and they were thrown out from the side of God and they came to belong with the Gentiles, the destroyers. The content here is just like in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 12, when it says that those who were in God's possessions were judged and thrown away and became the possession of someone else. The realities of the kings of the earth the royal families, the generals, the rich, the strong, the servants, all of these are the saints and the appointed workers of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed. They began with the spirit, but returned to the flesh is what this means. And that is why they hide in the caves and the mountains and the rocks. What it means to hide is that they have entered into the Gentile organization who are the destroyers. The cave is dark, 
It is just like going into the darkness and leaving the light. Hiding behind the mountain. This mountain refers to a church, and hiding there means that they now belong to the church of the Gentiles of the destroyers. And hiding with the rocks means that they are relying on the Gentile pastors, the destroyers. What this event tells us is that they were abandoned through judgment, and instead of repenting and returning back to God, they chose to belong to the Gentiles and to rely on them. In the end, they are judged and kicked out of their place, and through chapters 8 and 9, the rest of them are spiritually killed by the Gentiles one-third at a time. The reason they were kicked out to the Gentiles is as explained before. These events in Revelation chapter 6 is about these people who were chosen by God and Jesus and they worked as a lamp to brighten up the darkness for some time. But due to their corruption and betrayal, they had fallen away. They were called for repentance, but they had rejected this call for a repentance and did not accept it, so they were judged and came to an end. They had broken the covenant with God just like Adam, and they served Gentile gods, and that is why they are kicked out to the Gentiles. This tabernacle temple is not something that had been passed down through tradition, but it is a temple that was specifically chosen and built by Jesus at the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. God had worked with these people to give light into the darkness, but not long after they were chosen, they became corrupted and sinned. They ate the food sacrificed to idols, committed idolatry, and so they were told to repent, but they did not listen, and therefore they were destroyed through judgment. And the actual events had appeared as such that we see. Let's summarize from the first seal to the sixth seal. The seven messengers of the Tabernacle Temple founded in 1966 at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, worked as a light to prepare the way. After being in Jesus' right hand, they became corrupt and they fell, which is why they received the letters in chapters 2 and 3. But these seven messengers who did not repent after receiving the letters were judged in the 1980s, roughly 14 years after the church was established and everything came to an end. They became one with the Gentiles, became their possession, and this led to their destruction and their end. Now, let's draw the conclusion. In Revelation chapter 6, Jesus judged the chosen people who betrayed by using the four living creatures from Revelation chapter 4. The most important event out of all this is when the sixth seal is opened. Those who had sinned in Revelation chapter 6 were cast out and they are the realities of the subjects of the kingdom from Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. After Jesus' first coming, 2,000 years have passed by. The chosen people who betrayed come to an end as we see in Revelation chapter 6, and those who are thrown out are killed by the Gentiles in Revelation chapters 8 and 9. After the events of Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 7 tells us about the establishment of the new kingdom, the 12 tribes, by sealing and harvesting. This is such a hopeful and such an amazing content, right? You will hear through our tribe leader next time about how these 12 tribes are created according to the Bible. Christianity today is divided into many, many denominations. 
Even hundreds of denominations exist today. But the recreated Christianity is just one. In Amos chapter 3, verse 7, God says that He does not do anything without first revealing to His servants the prophets. And so just like this, God shows the entire chapters of the book of Revelation to one pastor and has him testify about this. Where God and Jesus are, where they are together, that is where salvation is. Where God and Jesus are, that is where the Word of God is. And this Word of Revelation that no one could see inside because it was sealed with seven seals can now be testified fully because it is opened by Jesus. The place where that explanation comes from that is where God and Jesus are. And that place is Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. We thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this session today. And please remember, we are one together in God and Jesus. We hope that you will listen to the end in order to confirm this so that you will have complete faith and be the precious people who will be in the grace of God and Jesus as one together. We are one. Let us pray. Holy Father God, to whom we are grateful, we thank you for awakening us today and opening up the word of life. When Jesus returns, this word that no one could understand because it was sealed with seven seals, at its appropriate time as promised, it is delivered through one chosen pastor so that all of the events can be shown as a reality and testify to the churches. According to that command, throughout the entire world, the prophecies and fulfillment of revelation is being delivered. May you help all of us here who are listening to these words to receive and enjoy the promised blessings by hearing, understanding, and acting according to these words. Please send your angel to guide our hearts and our minds so that we can listen to the very end. We give all the gratitude and honor and glory to you, Father, who is the Creator. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the Redeemer of life. Amen. Thank you. The seal of God, what does this mean? Whose seal should we receive? Who are the 144,000 people? How do you know if you have been sealed or not? Faith is the path of following the Bible. In Matthew 7, it is said, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. Let us fully understand these words of revelation and go to heaven together. You also briefly watched the seventh chapter of uh, Revelation, which you will discuss in detail next time. I hope that you do not miss the next session and that you will receive the precious understanding and grace from God. Shincheonji Church of Jesus is abiding by all quarantine rules while conducting the seminar. We wish you well. Also, if you have any questions or inquiries, please see below for our contact and we will respond sincerely. And let us end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To you is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, we will give all glory to Father God and Jesus. Thank you.